Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my Florida drive-by. It's about 81 degrees, pretty nice day out today, about 11 o'clock. Hey, I wanted to bring up uh, a subject here uh, and uh, see what everybody, you know, throw out a subject, see what everybody thinks. What's the single best modification you can do to a Glock? Single best modification. Well, let's think about it. I'm sure there's a lot of Glock owners out there, and they make a lot of Glocks. And there's a lot of modifications to Glocks. But we're talking about a single modification you can make to a Glock to, well, I'm saying there's two, uh, I guess, uh, classifications. So that's what I'm going to bring up. The single modification okay for reliability and for peace of mind so I guess there's you know two modifications but really I'm, I'm just picking one in each category well you know the Glock is uh, the way it is built is the way it is built what I mean by that Gaston Glock years ago when they designed the Glock okay, and I'm a Glock armor uh, years ago when they designed the Glock, they designed it, uh, you know, uh, kind of with a hair trigger, okay, they designed it to be a real uh, hair trigger, accurate gun, you know, and because of that, they had some problems, okay, they had problems with a few misfires. And Glock was faced with a pretty big lawsuit. So this made them rethink their design of their gun. And they made a few changes. They came out with the safe system, safe action system for the gun, the safety system. And they changed the internals on their guns, on all of them across the board. They changed the connectors, a lot of internal parts, to not have a hair trigger. So the gun you say today is, see today is the result of, you know, the probably the anti-gunners and the fanatics and everything. So it's changed over the years. But right now that is the way it is, and that's why they're all produced that way, and that's what you get. You know, uh, and if you look inside of a Glock and take it apart, inside of it immediately you can see. Um, how it looks inside the design of it and you'll see that it's sparse uh, you know most of the parts are not polished out or anything like that they look rough and they did that for a reason they did that for two things reliability and because they don't want that real light trigger pull so and that's why they have this, the you know the the heavier uh, connector in there and everything. So the, the gun overall was designed that way. Glocks really are designed as a combat gun, law enforcement gun, carry gun, a gun that can get dirty, a gun that can get wet, a gun that you can throw in the back of your car, it can sit there for a few months, it can get bounced around, it can get shit in it, uh, but you drop it in the water, you know, drop it in the mud, and they'll work. Another thing I wanted to bring up, people talk about lubrication on guns. Over lubricating gun. Myself, I don't think you can over lubricate a gun. Because how does the gun work? What does it fire? There's a spring with a firing pin, and then massive force from that bullet pushes the slide back, right? And for, if, if oil or grease is going to hold that or make, make that sticky, then you got a bad gun. Okay, so it's just like firing with no lubrication. No lubrication will be worse because you'll have more friction and more wear. But too much or not enough is not going to hurt. Too much is not going to hurt the gun. Not enough will cause excessive wear and friction. So, just you know, that's just a point. I'm just just sticking in there. And um, so, the Glock was designed the way it is today. So, let's say you know what are the modifications that you can make the. The single most important modification to a Glock that you could make in reliability and ease of mind. 
ease of mind could also be reliability too. Well, I think there's two myself. The first one, I firmly believe, is the safety system on it for peace of mind. Safety for this peace of mind because myself, and I have a lock, and I carry the thing. I'm always scared it's gonna go off. That's just me. It won't be unless you pull the trigger. I realize that it won't unless you're, you know, not handling it correct. I, I know that. But I always feel that, you know, for some reason, that thing is gonna go off and I'm gonna get shot in the foot or shot in the uh, thigh like the guy on YouTube did. So, myself, I like a device called the Cider Lock. And right above this, I have a, a video of a cider lock installation, so you can click on that. Uh, it says cider lock right above here to the right, just where this road work sign is. You can see this here, this thing to the right, right there. So, uh, cider lock is a active safety versus passive. Passive, you really can't turn on or off. That's like their safe lock, their safe system. Uh, clock has a three-part safe system. Okay. It consists of the uh, safety plunger or firing block pin. It consists of the um, trigger lock. There's a little part there when you press the trigger that depresses it, that unlocks it, that part. And there's a rear ledge drop safety. Okay, like a ledge on the end of the trigger bar. So those three parts prevent your lock from firing, even if you drop it. The only time it's going to be able to fire is when you, if, if the slide is racked, right, and you press on the trigger, that little uh, safety depressor or whatever it is, will go down, energize everything, pull the trigger and goes off. Okay, so that was Glock's uh, claim to fame. Some other companies do use something similar to it. But that's all passive, you know, it's, it's on, and it's only active when you press the trigger. Now, versus a full active safety, like the cider lock, replaces the clock the trigger, but does not take away from the drop system. So in essence, you have four safeties. You have your standard drop system, and then you have a lock that locks the, the uh, trigger. Where if you pull it, pull, pull the trigger, it's not going to go off, which I kind of like. And it's all it is is a little push-pull button. <laughs> so I have it on my Glock. I like it. It's a $50 edition. You can add it yourself. It's not that hard. Like I say, I'm right here. Are some videos of it, and uh, you can you can add it anytime you want and turn it on or off. It's, it's really a nice device. It doesn't void your warranty through Glock. And, you know, for safety features, if you ever did use it in an event where you used your gun, you wouldn't be into legal issues. Now, the second item, classification, would be performance. Well, Glock, it's pretty tough to make it perform much better than it is. Because they perform pretty damn good. Now, sights, you really don't have to get night sights. White dot sights and outline is fine on the gun. Now you can get night sights, but what are you going to shoot at with night sights? Are you going to shoot in the dark at somebody? For that, you'd have to have a flashlight or a tack light on the gun. And then you really wouldn't need night sights, would you? So I look at this issue of night sights for what? Low light? Well, if it's low light, night sights really don't work very good in low light. They usually work in dark light. The only thing I can see is people use the night sights because they want to make the guns look nice. And the outline on it, which is a white outline anyway on the tritium most of the time, they use that. Um, extended slide release? Eh, not really. I think the slide release on a clock is fine. Extended mag release? I don't think that really matters much either. I think it's fine. Extended takedown lever. Yeah, yeah, I think the gun is fine. Stippling or uh, grip tape for myself. 
I never needed it. I think it's fine. I think step plane actually can make the gun look pretty crappy. But that's, you know, to each his own. Uh, bottom plugs, uh, where the hollow area behind the magazine is in the bottom, those plugs. I don't think they serve much of, uh, you know, myself, I, I'm not into them, you know. I'm not saying I wouldn't add these things to the gun, but I'm just talking about the single most modif the single best modification that could give your gun, uh, you know, the, the best performance or an enhancement in performance. Um, now we get into basically uh, the inside of the gun. We're not really going to talk about barrels because, you know, the barrel's fine on the clock. So inside the gun, there's a, there's a few things you can do. You can change the connector to a Glock, not a Ghost, no. Glock OEM, you can buy them on eBay, three and a half pound, and that'll give you a uh, less of a trigger pull. You can change your trigger spring to a New York 1 or a New York 2, and that'll give you more like a revolver pull on your gun. You can go ahead and take your, change your old trigger bar and trigger assembly. I don't recommend it because now you're moving into a high performance. And the gun's not a high performance gun. You take away reliability when you get into that. So you say, well, what, what should you do? Myself, you know what I do? And you can do it yourself and it's not expensive. I like polishing the inside of the gun. I take the trigger bar and I polish the whole thing except the back of the crucifix, okay? Look at my videos. If you want to look on the upper left here, where these orange barrels are, right above them in the video, I have in there what I do. Uh, on the back of the trigger bar, there's like a uh, cross. And at the very end of it, there's a ledge. You don't want to touch that ledge because that rests against your uh, strike. You want that to be rough. You don't want to touch that smooth. But what I do is I, I take the whole thing apart, I take out the connector, and I polish all of those surfaces to make them really smooth. Okay. And I, while I'm doing that, I also hit the safety plunger, the flat area of that hole. Just, uh, just polish it up so it's smooth. So what's happening, it's, it's smooth. That's the single one modification I can think which is great for your block. And, guys, it doesn't really cost much. You can go get a thing as a mother's mag wheel polish, an one ounce container, probably about for about $350. And that's all you really need. That and some old underwear or old socks. And you can polish that up and make it really nice. And by the way, you can use that to polish your pens that hold the gun together, to polish your uh, slide safety, to polish your takedown lever, uh, you know polish other parts on the gun like that and make them look clean. You can even polish the, the striker or the firing pin. That's if you want to, you know. Uh, but like I say, be careful of the, the rear ledge even on the striker. Uh, there's a little rear ledge there. You don't want to polish that out. It touches the trigger bar because that needs to be holding, you know, tight. It doesn't need to slide. But in my estimation, that's so the, the one, the one uh, re, not reliability, but the one which is peace of mind is the cider lock. And I would say make performance is to polish the internal components. And then, of course, when you put it back together, you know, you want to well oil the gun with some nice, really heavy lubricant to prevent any kind of friction. But, I mean, that's what I think. Everybody's different, but uh, a lot of other stuff you don't really need. And if you're trying to make your Glock into, like, a target gun, forget it, guys. Go out and spend the 2000 on a really nice 1911. You'll have something in the box that was built for target. And you can still use it for defense. I mean, you can go out and buy plenty of 1911s. Uh, because most of your match grade guns that are target, like the Six, they make the X-Series and the Master Series. They're all single action anyway. Because that trigger, you know. But thanks a lot for tuning into my video. Have a great day. I hope this was educational. And uh, please subscribe. Please comment. Take it easy.